Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. For those of you who haven't seen the show, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 60 of us at Myrick O'Connell, 40 in Worcester and 20 in Westboro, which allows everybody to specialize, and I specialize in elder law. So I started this show several years ago to supplement the presentations that I do at the Senior Center, which are really more legal-based. The purpose of this show is to really talk to seniors about the people and programs that you want to know about as a senior because they could really affect you. Or in this case, an initiative that could really be wonderful for a lot of us as seniors and for a lot of, of the people that we care for. Uh, and here to talk about it is my friend Christine Alessandro. Thank you very much for coming, Christine. Thank you for having me, Arthur. And Christine is the Executive Director of uh, Bay Path Elder Services. That's why we've, we've seen her before. Uh, Bay Path is the regional entity that really is the provider of, or the funnel through which most federal and state programs go. Is that a kind of a fair description of the? That's a fair description. Fair description of the yeah. agency, and and you cover a big area. You cover like how many how many communities? Fourteen communities in Metro West. Fourteen communities, yes. and and we're kind of on the, uh, far, uh, where I live in Marlboro, we're kind of a farther on the western end. Correct. But, but you include Ashland. You, you and then you sweep all the way east to like. Natick and Framingham and Wayland and Sudbury and, to the north, and yeah. then Holliston and Hopkinton to the south, and yeah. the three boroughs to the west. And you've even got like Dover and Sherbin way out in Absolutely, the east, right? Absolutely, yes. And, and that's, a, that's a long ways. So, and we've talked about the many programs that you provide, but I wanted to talk today specifically about this really interesting initiative that you were involved in, that, that we both are, I guess, um, regarding having communities become dementia-friendly communities. Right. Talk about that for a little while. Well, dementia-friendly communities, it's so exciting, a really exciting initiative. Um, not because there's so many people growing older, but mm -hmm. it really is going to become a public health issue. So we want to make sure our communities are prepared. Uh, currently, one in nine individuals over 65 has Alzheimer's, and one in three over 85 has Alzheimer's. And the number of people with the disease will triple by 2050. So we know we have some pre-planning that we have to do. So I thought it an opportune time to kind of dig in and let's get started. Let's get a move on it. And certainly there were a lot of people, there were so many people that we both deal with who, for, who have, are involved with somebody or have been involved with somebody who had dementia. Can you just talk about what, what it is? What, what the, this, is there a particular process for becoming a dementia-friendly community? Has anybody done this? Kind of what's going on? Well, we looked around because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. And we found always a, a good thing for us, especially yes. as older people. Right. You know? Exactly. You, that, that, that reinventing the wheel gets really old, the exactly. older you get. Right? Yeah. We looked around and we finally settled on a model out of Minnesota who has really been a leader in this field. And the model in Minnesota is called Act on Alzheimer's. And the state developed this initiative at least 10, 12 years ago because they realized that the number of individuals with dementia would be rapidly growing. So Act on Alzheimer's is a model that has a four-step process to help communities become dementia friendly. Mm -hmm. And this is a grassroots initiative. It's mm -hmm. a community initiative. It's not a Bay Path initiative, but it's the members of the community coming together to say, we want to do something and we want to be prepared. Yeah. So the four steps are develop an action team, then you do an assessment of your community, you analyze the results of the assessment, and then you develop an action plan of what you will do in the community to make it more dementia friendly. So you're not, this isn't a program where you're kind of starting off with a set of things that you're gonna go do, right? You, you, it's, it's really a, a program to try to talk to people about what they think is, are the priorities in the community. Exactly, because I, I would not want to come into a community that's not mine and say, well, I think you need training. It's up to the individuals right. in the community to decide what they want to do and how they want to do it and we're just guiding them along in the process and i know once again we've talked about this one a lot a lot and i'm going to confess we both went to minnesota to kind of learn about this because we, we were both pretty skeptical about this we were just a little more than a year ago it was back in september of 2015 correct right? yes and and we're accompanied by who the senior uh, the senior center directors from northborough marlboro and hudson and uh, 
it was a fantastic trip. We learned a lot. I, I have to say that it was so phenomenal what they were able to teach us in a day and a half. And we walked away really empowered to begin this initiative in those three communities. And that was just about a year ago. It was about a year ago, and, yes. And, we and we've started. actually we've come a long way in those three communities. We have a facilitator who helps guide the process. Her name is Cindy. And so far, the communities have developed action teams. And they've been working together. Uh, in early June, they started doing a community assessment. And each community did about 100 surveys mm -hmm. apiece. And that's a lot of data to compile. And this is surveys of, of who? Of Up, whom? Across sectors. So we did businesses, we did government, legal and financial, healthcare settings, faith based communities community services and supports. So you get a very broad picture of what the community thinks their needs might be and, and where the gaps are. And, where the gap, and I suppose the interesting thing about that is that it also makes you think about, so if I'm an older person, whether I have dementia or not, if, if I am an older person, uh, wh where, do I, where do I interact with the community? What mm -hmm. are all the places where my interact, whether it's a restaurant or a bank or, a, or the, you know, going to the senior center or going to the park? Right or being in my neighborhood, and then kind of, you kind of think to yourself, well, if I had dementia, how would that change all of those different relationships? Exactly. So there must, you must come up with some interesting stories. Oh, there were so many those. stories out of this, absolutely. Um, and I remember you telling me one about the gas station. The gas station. My, when I was amazed. I, I was, so I was involved in my, my own community. I was, I was involved, and in, I actually chaired the, the group in Marlboro. And we were talking about what business sectors we wanted to talk to. And we were, you know, there were clearly obvious ones, restaurants and banks and the pharmacy. And, the, and someone said gas stations. And I said, gas stations? Why would I be doing gas stations? But, you know, I'm just a member of the group. So I said, okay. And I even volunteered to go talk to the guy, one of the guys that owns the gas station. has been there for years and years. Person was very interested in talking to me, among other things, because his grandmother's got dementia. Um, uh, one of the things I think we all found in doing these, in these surveys was you also would find how many people had actually had this affect their lives. You exactly. Know? And so I was talking to him, and, and, he, and, he, and I said, so, you know, are there any particular things about your operation of the gas station that really you think you could really be helped or, or that you're dealing with these issues? He said, oh, all the time. And I was like, all the time? He said, yeah. He said, think about it. He said, you're a person who has dementia, and you go take, and you take a drive, and you still get your car because, of course, you haven't admitted that you've got dementia. You're still in denial over this, and you feel, still think you can do this. And now you got lost. You're in your car. You get lost. Where do you go? You go to the gas station. Exactly. Right. Where am I? So, and he told me the story. He told me this one, this one great story. This guy that had come in from Boston. He lived in Boston, and he was driving to visit his sister in Florida. So he had all of his maps, and he's all set, and he's driving, and he's just checking kind of where he is um, because he's heading to Florida. But he had left his house in Boston at 9 o'clock, and now it's 2 p.m., and he's in Marlboro. And so my, so my friend is, right. is like, well, this guy's got a real problem here. Right. But, but you say to yourself, as he said, he said, no, what do I do? Do I call exactly. the police? I don't want to call the police. And what the, would the police do? You know, right. you can't be arrested for just being confused, right. you know. I can't, do I call, there's, I don't know any relative. What do I do? Right. So there were those kinds of stories. They're just right. really interesting and stories. And it really makes you step back and think, wow, it's more pervasive. It's more than we ever imagined. Because when you told me gas stations, I was, you know, S gas stations. stations. But if you think about it, you know, the older generation, that they, they don't have GPSs. They have maps. That's what, that's what I remember. They have you maps. Know, maps. So, right. and if right. you get lost, you go to the gas station. So. That was an incredible story and really made an impact on me. And so that you, we, you'd go and you'd do all of these surveys, and so folks really did a variety of surveys around a whole bunch of, and who were the, who, who typically was involved in this? Who were the volunteers? Well, the volunteers were community members. Yeah. We, we have champions in each community, folks who are really leading the charge, so to speak. But the folks on the action team may be um, from the police department, the fire department, uh, from local businesses, yep. restaurants, uh, across sectors. Really, we looked across sectors, me members of the faith-based community, because they each bring something different to the team. 
Yeah, we remember hearing those stories. You know, the really difficult right. story of the the, the the woman or the man that was asked to not come to services anymore because he or she was acting inappropriate at the service. Correct. And, and, and it's, it's tough because you feel the tension. On the one hand, certainly from the perspective of everybody else at the service, right. that's a real problem. From the, per the perspective of that person, though, to be able to, you're that age and you have dementia and you can't go to church, you're right. asked to not go to church, how do you deal with stuff like that? I know, and there are other things that perhaps that organization can do. That church can perhaps develop another type of service, a shorter service where yes. everyone can get together and say the prayers. Yeah, I remember the prayers from my childhood of going to church that will never leave me. So right. if you bring everybody together, it's very comforting. It doesn't need to be an hour, hour and a half service, but just time together, that's what's really important to the individual, that they feel that empathetic touch of people just being together. And, and that's, I think that really captures so much about what this notion of dementia friendly, having a dementia friendly community is is about, I guess, what, what's so appealing about it when you talk about it is, you know, I know for myself, so my mother died in a nursing home. I have, a, I have two older brothers. One of them, my oldest brother, has a kind of an early stage diagnosis. He still looks pretty good right now to me, but, you know, you don't know. Um, and so I feel like it's coming. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be living in a, by the time I get there, I've right. got, I need a community that's dementia friendly. Right. Right? Because it's going to be kind of affecting me. And we're going to make sure your favorite restaurant is dementia friendly. Is deme <laughs> which, by which, and what's a dementia friendly restaurant look like? Well, a dementia friendly restaurant is one where the wait staff and ownership understand not only the symptoms of dementia, but perhaps some of the behaviors that can come along with dementia. So instead of coming up to you with this large menu, because you've been going there for years and years, they might come up and say, Mr. Bergeron, would you like the fish or the chicken today? Knowing that's two of your favorites and kind of right. limit your choices. Right. Or if they know that you really enjoyed having that glass of white wine, well, maybe they'll give you a glass of seltzer with some food coloring in it. You're gonna yeah. enjoy it just like it was a glass of wine, but it's not the wine. So it's those little things that make an enjoyable experience for not only you, but for the people that you're with. And for the people that I'm with, right. So these results are in. Yes. And have they, and, and what, are these, what are these teams in the three communities doing from there? Well, we gave the results to all the uh, team, to all the council uh, senior center directors yep. yesterday. Yep. And we have set up uh, meetings with their action teams to share the results with them. And from there, the action teams will hold community meetings to develop their action plans. That's really exciting. Now, I wanted to do this, This and once again, this is a relatively short show, but I wanted to get, give folks a sense of this, just because I've been coming to Ashland now for uh, uh, quite a few years, and I really like coming to Ashland, because it just <laughs> reminds me of my home. It reminds me of Mall, where it reminds me of Hudson. Remember, you know, it's a, it's a classic old, you know, older community. And to the extent that folks here are thinking about this, and I know a lot of people here who, who have family members or who are suffering themselves with dementia. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that some of them will just kind of think about whether they want to do this themselves. Absolutely. And so think about all of this. Uh, and I'm going to try over the next several months to bring in other guests to talk about these issues. And, and then you can decide whether Ashland should, be a, should become a community that is dementia friendly, maybe for your benefit and that of a whole lot of other folks that you know. So. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Christine Alessandro, for coming in. Thank you, Arthur. And I look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Bergeron Briefs.